Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the second post-match press conference, and indeed the last press conference for World Cup 2023. Uh, I'd like to welcome onto stage the world champions, uh, in particular, obviously, coach Jacques Nienaba and captain Sia Colisi. And we'll just ask Jacques perhaps to say a few words, now he's sitting next to that cup, and after such an amazing game. Um, yeah, thank you. Thank you, everyone. And, um, ach ja, relief is probably the first word that it comes to mind, um, a relief in the sense, I'll get to our fans now, but a relief in the sense of uh, the special group of players that we have. Uh, we, uh, as, as a management and leadership group, we always thought that uh, we, we just can't uh, mess this up because they always, we, we, we from, this, from 2018, thought they had the ability to, to win the 2023 World Cup and 2019 was, was something that they, they probably opt on along the way, <coughs> uh, but in saying that, so I'm relieved for the players, they deserve that and they were good enough to do that. And then, but this is probably for our fans, uh, for South Africa. Um, I wish I could show you the amount of messages and videos and what was going on in South Africa. I think there were 62 million people that, that, that united from small farming communities, opening up showgrounds that people from all walks of life uh, could go in and the, the entrance fee was, was whatever you want to donate and people bought t-shirts, green t-shirts for everyone. So um, we felt every single little bit of energy they gave us and I think in the last three games uh, with three one-point victories we, we needed that and uh, that drove us um, so yeah that's me okay thank you Jacques first question hands up gentleman in the front here please uh, in the see front. Yep. I um Another close game. Um, I did a piece with Scott Britz in the week, and he talked about the emotions, the friendships, being the things that get you through these marginal games. Please tell us about what this means to you both as friends, as mates, and the emotions contained there. Um, I, yeah, I, I think Jack um, said it there. Um, honestly, the, the 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 last World Cup, um, we went. We, the country was hopeful that maybe there's a chance we can win it, you know. And after we've won it, and what transpired after that was a belief behind this team, you know. And I think the people of South Africa that are sitting here in front will tell you, there's not a lot of things going right in our country. And sport, has the, we have the privilege, you know, not the, I don't know, not the pressure, we have the privilege of being able to do what we love you know, and, and, and inspire people from different walks of life, not just rugby people or sports people, but just people in life. And I think the team, you know, a lot of us where we come from, I mean, Jack spoke to us this week, life probably, we shouldn't be where we are today. There is no ways we are come from, I could have dreamt of being here today, you know, and kids that come from um, farming areas never could think that they would be uh, here today. Chairs then who come from the, you know, who, who come from where we come from, you know, and people from the Cape Flat, we come from different walks of life, but, and I have my own reasons to play rugby. I have my own goals and ambitions. I want to look after my family. I want to make sure I give back to my community because without them, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be here. Some are, per are playing for the parents who are not here with us anymore, you know, but what brings us together is our country. What brings us today together to play for is, is the Springbok and then South Africa. And that's what has been driving us. That's honestly that's been driving. And I can't explain it to you in words. You need to be a South African to understand. You need to come to South Africa and see it. It's a beautiful country with a lot of problems. But once we come together, and we've come together a lot before for a common goal, and I promise you, nothing can stop up as the country. And it's not just in sport, it's in life in general. It's in everyday work. And that's what we're trying to do, you know, each and every single day by giving everything. We're not saying we're going to win all the time, but we promise you we'll give it everything. And goals without hard work and effort means nothing. And we had to put in the hard work and sacrifice all the time to being away from our family. And, um, yeah, uh, it couldn't have... I wouldn't change the script how it's done, you know. And we... The friendship. I've known Jock since I don't, 
I was 18 years old. I'd known Coach Rassi. He gave me my first contract. Me and Eben made him in 17. We were sitting there before the game, and Eben was laughing. He's always serious before a game. He was smiling. He's like, what a great opportunity to be doing this with people that you come along with. France, my labor, we all come from the same um, uh, journey and area. And so it's real for us, you know. We, we care for each other. We care for our country. And, yeah, I will do this over and over again. Okay. Gentleman in the front. Uh, good morning, Sia. Sure. Good morning, Jacques. Uh, Jacques, for you in particular, um, you look back at the call to recall Andre Pollard. It was a decision that uh, elicited a lot of reaction back in South Africa, and through the tournament, there have always been questions about goal kicking. You look back at that decision now, how proud are you and, and, and the selection group of making that decision despite its unpopularity, despite the lack of foresight at the time, and how it's come off in the, last, in, in the playoff stages? Yeah, I think uh, when it comes to team selection, I, I probably have to give credit to the team. And, and Sia has spoken uh, in our press conference uh, in the, in the build-up to this, this game. He's, he spoke about it that, you know, Marnie probably deserves it. Uh, um, a guy like Kubis deserves it if you think what they've done in the quarterfinal and the semifinal. But the one thing that we do have is we have 33 players that's the right players. We're not necessarily always the best players in our positions, but they're the right players. So uh, when we go with a strategy and we explain it, um, a guy like Kubis accepts it, um, a guy like Marnie accepts it, uh, and they probably deserve to play in this match. But st strategically, we had, we had a specific path. And, and in saying that, I'm not saying we are geniuses. Uh, please don't see it like that. We, uh, we don't try and be creative and think out of the box and stuff like that. It's just the squad that we have and the depth that we have and how close things are uh, or the players are, uh, um, that gives us the opportunity to maybe go a little bit different uh, than normal. Uh, it's not genius. It's just, listen, the players that we have uh, has got the ability to, 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 to give us different tactical uh, uh, viewpoints, if I can put it like that. And, and then also I want to say that uh, we, we have all our families with us, kids and, uh, and, and the families. And, and you know what? Um, Marnie's uh, fiance, Kubis' wife, the, when we don't select them, they have to put all the pieces together uh, because obviously they're disappointed. But yes, I must say, within two or three hours, they, they just accept their role and their role is then, they're not going to play on the weekend, but Marnie was the best Richie Mwanga he could have been. Uh, he tested us, he studied him, his mannerisms. Uh, a, a guy like Kubis uh, um, studied uh, uh, Aaron, his mannerisms, things that he does. So, I mean, and, and that's probably the strength of the group is that there's 33 players that understand their roles and they don't have egos and uh, they buy into it, yeah. Gentlemen towards the back. Sia, Jacques, first of all, congratulations for uh, this victory. Sia, you have just won the cup and you won it four years ago in Japan. What's different, what's similar in comparison, maybe in the path, uh, in the motivation, in the feeling, in the reaction between now and four years ago? Thank you and congratulations again. Thank you. Um, yeah, the path was definitely, um, was definitely difficult, um, but we knew before the time that, I mean, the pools were chosen, I don't know when, and we knew, and I think ja, um, Jack and Coach Rassi always speak to us, there and they say, um, I mean, Coach Rassi said, great things are never achieved in ideal conditions, and this was in ideal uh, conditions for us as a group. I mean, playing the home team in their own country is, 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 is one of the hardest things to do, and then obviously, the way we played the last game, um, against England, which was tight as well, we had to fight, and then today as well, not uh, no different. But I think the motivation was, uh, as, as we said earlier, was everything from 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 home, you know, and our families. And the, I think the coaches also create an environment for us where we can be with our families, no matter where we are. It feels like home every time we go back to the hotel. Our kids are there. We have like 15 to 20 kids running around the hotel. You know, and that gets us through the tough days. It's one of the greatest things I think they could have done for us. And I think 
the people also from South Africa, who some people, I mean, some of our friends, they've put, they use their savings to buy a ticket to just come and, and, and watch us play. That kind of stuff, we hear it and we see it and we respect that. I mean, for me not to give my 100% on that field will be cheating all of those people. And that's what the coaches always remind us. So the motivation for us, we don't have to look far. It's around us in the group. We look at your, your story, where you come from, how far you had to fight to get to where you are today. So motivation is always there. It's not something we lack in our country. Okay, on the left over here. See ya, uh, congratulations. Um, there were a couple of massive moments in that game. Sam Kane's red card. Can you tell us about that and how much of a difference you thought that made in the end result? But also, how nervous were you waiting in the sin bin to see if yours would be upgraded? And also, did you chat to Sam afterwards? And if so, what what did you chat about? Yeah, it was. Yeah, it's never. It's never. Nice, obviously, for a player to get like, any card on the field. And but we knew, like, when they got the card, they were just gonna lift. Uh, themselves. When we spoke at half time, mm -hmm. we said they're gonna get up now. We mustn't uh, try and release, and they did, and they did exactly that after half time. And um, for me, I was obviously I was also um, nervous, but um, yeah, I did watch the the, the video, and I, I saw that I did level change, and I, it was a secondary where my, my my head followed up. But I trusted the guys around me, you know, that they obviously could fight for that long, and then obviously getting another one at the end. We yeah, it was it was difficult. It was messy, but we we'd been in these positions before. So yeah, I, I trusted that the guys would fight for 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 for, for that time. And obviously, when I came back on, I had to give it everything again. Okay, Craig, thanks. Uh, congratulations, guys. Uh, well done, Jacques. Just on the um, match itself, losing Bongi in the first minute. Um, obviously, uh, the lineouts were a bit ropey after that. That wasn't ideal. Um, how worried were you with that situation? Because it took away one of your, your major weapons in, in a way. Yeah, I think if you probably ask us which injuries we wouldn't have would like in, in, in early on, it would probably be Bongi and, and Faf. Uh, but that's the decision we made with the, with the squad we selected and the team we selected. And uh, like I said, there's always risks involved but we mitigate that and uh, yes um, uh, I, I don't know how many lineouts we've won or lost I mean I, I, I don't have that stats in my head now but um, but what Dion Ferry like let's say there's I don't even think there were but let's say there's 16 lineouts in the game there's there's 120 30 rucks uh, 15 20 tackles that he makes so the the sometimes the 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 lineouts he loses, uh, he makes up for it in other areas of the field, you know. And um, I thought, well done to him. I mean, he's, uh, I don't know what his age is, 38, some 37, 37 something like that. And to put in a shift like that um, is special. So, uh, but always knew, I've coached Dion since he was 20 years old, so always knew he had that dog in him. Okay, up here in the middle. Uh, hey Jacques, just wondering, wh wh what do you say coach to coach to Ian Foster after a, a game like that? A coach who's obviously, you know, been through a bit over the, the past couple of years and you know, his time ends with the All Blacks now after a, a World Cup final loss for them, you know, coach to coach. What do you say to Ian Foster after that? Yes, he's actually, uh, I, I, don't, I don't know a lot of coaches, to be honest. Uh, none, actually, except him, probably. He's the only guy that I that I ever have conversations with. Uh, so that probably speaks the, speaks the, the kind of person he is, you know, uh, before the, the game that we played um, in the warm-up game at Twickenham. Myself, uh, we had a, a, a cocktail function the night before the game or maybe two nights before the game, I can't remember, but myself and my wife and him were chatting away for 40 minutes about just life, you know, about his daughters, his family. So... Yes, my, I'm, I'm happy for us, but my heart breaks for him because I know what it feels like. And um, uh, yeah, he's an exceptional human being and an unbelievable coach. You know, uh, he was written off um, numerous times, him and his squad. But, but like the All Blacks, 
they the, the quality team they are they 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 find a way you know i think if you look at I, I mentioned it in the week i think if you look at sports teams in the world and i'm i'm saying all of them sailing motorsport formula 1 i think they're probably one of the most successful sporting teams uh, they they there's ever been so uh, yeah they quality quality outfit and and he was the leader of that so he's a quality individual okay we'll have one last question here at the front Congrats, Sia, and congrats, Jock. Uh, Jock, Peter Steff de Toy made 28 tackles in the final. Just your thoughts on his performance, please. Yeah, he was, he was phenomenal. Uh, um, <coughs> um, yeah, I know. Yeah, he, 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 uh, I don't know. Uh, because the fence is, is my department, so uh, no, he was exceptional. Um, he, he, uh, but I must say, he was, in the last couple of games, he was... He was he, 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 he wanted it desperately. N not only him, everyone wanted it desperately. But um, yeah, he just put himself in a position today and he, I always make a joke and say that um, if there's a, a white, a plastic bag that blows over the field he'll probably <laughs> chase that down as well so th that is the th that is him the mom's bitty missile he, and he was that tonight he was a machine well i think jock on what you said there like how he's how he, he's grown so much um and not only in just what he does on the field the way he was playing today like i wanted to watch him some of the hits that he was making i was standing there he was flying past me and making big hits, but he takes it now off the field, like with the team when we're down, how he speaks to us as a group. Yeah. Like last week, the chips were down, it was tough, you know, it was quiet in the change room when he got everybody up, get up, and he's like, you know, the way he's just taken what he can do on the field to what he can lead around the team, it's really been amazing. It's been great um, to have it. And I, I'm not, got no ego, anything like that. Sometimes I don't have the words to say, and some of the guys will come up you know, and give and tell us what we need to do. And he's taken that role and he hasn't taken it lightly and he backs it up uh, with what he does um, on the field as well. Yeah, so I'm really proud of, of, of what he's done and how hard he worked today. And yeah, all of the guys in the group, I mean, I'm going to, yeah, I'm talking to, to Dwayne as well. I'm, I'm so honoured to play with these kind of guys. We're, you know, it's It's really... I can't explain it in words, to know who they are, their stories and, and the effort that they put in, you know, and some of the injuries, the guy, Ox shouldn't be there, he's packed to, but he fought to get back, you know, Eben has been struggling with the shoulder and the knee, and he fought to get back into the team as well, you know, it hasn't been an, an, an easy journey, and to look at the guys, and I can't believe that what, what, what we've achieved today, honestly, and the coaching staff have been ridiculous, I mean, I've worked with Jock since I was I was 17 years old. I couldn't tackle. He, when him and Rasi used to come to tackle uh, to to training, we had to play full contact. We had to show them that you know you can do this. So, and 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 since then, how he used to motivate us in games. How we grew around him. Myself, Ebe in France, and Stephen Kitsov, Peter Steph. We all played together. Other Jock. And I said last week, like how he cared about us as people. He, he took it further. And then he, when he speaks to me, he asked me, are you going to let Kezia down, my daughter? Are you going to let your son down, Nicholas? It became far deeper than just a rugby game. So, Chuck, I wanna, honestly, it's, it's been a huge honor for me and a huge privilege. And your family too, your wife and the kids, uh, Lila and John, you know. And, and I, I appreciate you. We love you as a team, not as a coach, but as a person. You've, you've taken to another, and the way you speak to us gets us, it's not make a big hit, make a tackle. You talk to me as a person, you know, you talk to me as a father, as a husband, as a son. I'm really grateful for you, and it goes such a long way for a player. So thank you, and we honor you uh, as a team, and I hope that you're proud of us. And yeah, all the best where you're going. They'll be lucky to have you wherever you are, wherever you go. Thanks. Thanks, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Jacques. Thank, thank you, Sia. Thank you, ladies thank and gentlemen. You. Thank you, everyone. The mix zone will open very shortly for it to make way down. Thank you.